After 10 wonderful days in Istanbul, Alessio and I decided it was time to start exploring the rest of the country. We got back on the bike and started driving towards the west coast on the Aegean Sea. Over the following 10 days, we drove through local villages, visited impressive archaeological sites, admired the beautiful nature and wildlife of the Dilek Peninsula, and visited the world famous Pamukkale Pools. Enter for the second time Asia! Yeah! This time from the Dardanelles Strait. So we left uh, this morning in Istanbul around 10 30. It's been a long ride, quite a few hours. It's almost five now. Yeah, and it's super, super windy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, very shortly we're gonna cross the bridge and get into Asia. Now on, we'll be in Asia! Yeah! yeah. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. As I learned from our archaeological correspondent Alessio, Turkey, like Greece, has plenty of impressive archaeological sites. Uh, yeah, this is the rock pools. No, the archaeological yeah. site. Is there an archaeological site? <laughs> yes. No, you're joking. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Oh, I didn't expect Turkey to have so many. I uh, know, we have seen more in, in Turkey than Greece. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. So are, you, are we going there? I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can be Alberto Angela yes. again. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We are today in the archaeological city of Troy. Why is Troy so famous? First of all, um, it's famous for its strategic uh, uh, location. Um, the city was built uh, uh, 5,000 years ago. And here we are at the beginning of the Dardanelli Strait until uh, Vasco da Gama um, discovered new trade routes around uh, Africa. The only way for Europeans to trade with Asia through the Silk Road was to go through the Dardanelli Strait and then going to the Black Sea. The location of Troy was of strategic import, uh, controlling the strait, and where um, many ships were stopping and waiting uh, for the best time to cross the Dardanelli Strait. In this archaeological site, we can see many layers of the city. They found uh, seven different layers. Why layers? Because, because of the long history, the city has been built, uh, destroyed, and built again. It's been also a um, very important settlement for the Romans. And the second reason is the Trojan horse a story about how Greek soldiers conquered Troy by hiding into a horse. <laughs> Bergama, uh, the ancient city of Pergamum, um, played an important role in the development of Western civilization. It's been a center for science, medicine, pharmacy, art.
Pergamon was one of the main healing century uh, during Roman times. Uh, many people were coming here to heal. Uh, they were treating emperors. Uh, uh, they were treating uh, uh, gladiators, uh, and it, it was a, it was a proper sanctuary with uh, uh, streets, uh, colonnades, uh, theater, uh, libraries, uh, places indeed where people were healing. And this is for Barbara Barbie. Already uh, in those ancient times, they were using uh, musical therapy uh, for healing. Patients were treated uh, with, uh, with herbs, uh, massages, with vegetable oils and creams, and they were having uh, hot and cold uh, baths. And now, Ephesus. The early Ephesus dates back the 7th millennium BC, 9,000 years ago. At its peak in 180 AD, Ephesus used to be the biggest city after Rome, with a quarter of a million people. Here my favorite spot, the library. This is what you get if you go late in the afternoon. The arena all for you. Look at this, 5.55 a.m. We're already up, we just had breakfast, we're ready to go. We're going to Pamukkale today. We want to be there early, so at 6.30 when the gate opens, we want to be there already so we can beat the crowds and have the pools all for ourselves for a little while. Welcome to the Dolomites. This is one of the main glaciers in the Dolomites. Mm -hmm. Joking. Pamukkale! What is Pamukkale? It's actually a huge hot spring. A hot spring of uh, hot water, which over time uh, uh, dry up, uh, releasing calcium uh, uh, into the ground. Water used to flow naturally in the past, but Today, uh, the water is released uh, uh, pretty much every day, uh, manually. 
I would say we have quite successfully beaten the crowd. <laughs> you had a good idea. Wake up early. Do you know what uh, Pamukkale means? <laughs> it means cotton castle. It does look like cotton. Cotton. Cotton castle. Still warm. Still pleasant. Very warm. I'm yeah. really happy. My feet are really happy. My feet too. So, did you like Pamukkale? I enjoyed Pamukkale. Mm -hmm. Thanks God, we went at 6.30 in the morning. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, advice for anyone who may be considering coming to Turkey and visiting Pamukkale, make sure you're there by 6.30 when the gate opens. Uh, we, there were probably around 10 people in total yeah, at the few. time, so it was perfect. We could enjoy the beautiful scenery. Uh, by 8 a.m., Big groups of tourists started arriving by 10 a.m. Don't go. Uh, it, it was terrible. It, it, there were so many people. Yeah, it was like crazy. a water park. It was yeah, like, there was no yeah. more yeah. magic atmosphere. Yeah. It was just yeah. loud music, yeah. people screaming. And it's a pity because it's the place pity, is beautiful yeah. and uh, uh, it's kind of ruined by this yeah. massive crowd going there. So Definitely. So be there early. Yeah. Uh, also be aware it's reasonably expensive because yeah. it's uh, well we paid 400 Turkish lira which yeah, is around 20 euro but I think it's worth it yeah definitely worth it and on top of the hot springs uh, when you are there you can also visit some ruins nice. it's nice to walk nice. around it's quite a big area so yeah. you get to walk around and see some ruins as well we actually spent four hours in total yeah, in Pamukkale so it was hours. definitely a good time yeah mm. and for all our followers from Australia and New Zealand in front of me is the Gallipoli Peninsula where the Anzac Cove is Anzac Cove is an important site for Australians and New Zealanders because it's where the Australian and New Zealand army landed in 1915 and where they fought for eight months of, as part of the Gallipoli campaign. We didn't get a chance to go and see the site but it's not too far from here. Welcome to La Rubrica Gastronomica di Ela where every week I show you some of the traditional foods and drinks of the country we're in. This week we tried the massive and delicious Anatolian breakfast, accompanied by Turkish tea, of course. Enjoy! Good morning! Good morning! I'm so happy today because we're about to have Anatolian breakfast. Anatolian breakfast is typical here in Turkey. It's a bit like brunch in the UK. So you come with friends, with family, you spend the time in the restaurant and you eat a massive amount of food, both savory and sweet. with spinach and beef tomato paste we have some cheese a thyme salad a selection of cheese figs and walnuts uh, some more figs we have a uh, bulgur salad honey we have olives uh, mayo carrot salad we have some fries and fried bread eggs with tomato and peppers 
aubergine salad, mixed salad here, hummus, some cherry jam, different types of bread, and some more goslem with potato to drink. Of course, we're in Turkey, so it's Turkish tea. But we can't wait to get started here. Cheers to the Anatolian breakfast. At the end of every meal in Turkey, the waiter or waitress comes and asks chai. Chai means tea in Turkish. And everybody after meals in Turkey drink tea, Turkish tea. Turkish tea is always served in this special glass. It's small and it has this curvy shape. No idea why it's always served in this glass, but this is the special tea glass. Some places even have a chai serve service where you go and you get your Turkish tea yourself. You first pour chai as much as you like, depending how strong you want your tea, and then you add the hot water. And then you drink it. To make Turkish tea at home, you need the special Turkish tea maker, which is this one, which consists of two teapots, a larger one at the bottom and a smaller one at the top. The one at the bottom, you just use it to boil water and then you leave the hot water inside. The one at the top, you put tea leaves in it together with boiling water. So then you stir the tea from the top pot as much or as little as you like and then you just top it up with the hot water which is in the larger pot. This way you can adjust the strength of the tea depending on your taste. Try and make it at home and let me know if you like it. Thanks for watching. Next, we'll visit some of the most renowned coastal towns in South Turkey.